Good day, students. Uh, welcome to uh, part one of the multi-part series on uh, some and different identities. Uh, we're going to be going over two examples um, in this clip, okay? So before we start uh, with the examples, let's take a look at the formulas, okay? All right, so um, some and different identities. So I'm going to write in, let's write down the title, some and uh, different identities. All right, so these are the formulas. So let's do the sign one first. So sign, sign, uh, plus, uh, sign x plus y. Write that down. Um, sign x plus y is given by so x plus y is uh, sine x plus sine y uh, plus uh, sine y cosine x. Okay? Alright. If you notice what happens here is when you do it this the sum identities for sine, the trig functions switch, but the, the sine stays the same. Okay? So I'm going to add on the, the minus. What if it were minus? If it was sine x minus y, it's going to be sine x cosine y minus sine y cosine x. Okay? So let me write it uh, down separately for you to see. So if it were minus sine x minus y. So anytime you deal with a sine, just remember to alternate the tree function sine x cosine y and keep the sine, okay? Sine y cosine x, all right? Now for cosine, the reverse happens, okay? If I have cosine x plus y, watch this. Is going to become cosine x cosine y um, minus sine x minus sine x sine y. What do you see happening here? You notice for the cosine sum identities, the trig functions stay the same, but the signs become the opposite. This is a plus, it became an opposite. Where after sine, the, tri the trig functions alternated, were different, but the signs were the same. Okay? So what about cosine x minus y? So remember the rule for cosine? Trig function stays the same starting with cosine. So we have cosine x and cosine y, but the sine switches. So this becomes a plus sine x sine y. Okay? So having these formulas memorized will uh, greatly aid you in, in um, a lot of these problems we're doing. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at question number one. Um, example one. Example one. We're uh, going to prove prove that uh, cosine x plus y is equal to 1 minus tan x tan y over uh, secant x secant y. All right? So the strategy here that I like to do with proofs in most cases is express everything in terms of the parent function, sine and cosine, and then see, um, reduce the side as, simplify the side as most complicated, okay? So on this left side, I have an x plus y here. This is screaming to apply the sum identities for uh, cosine. So I'm going to apply that here. So remember for cosine, you keep the trig function and switch to sine. Because when x plus y is going to be uh, become cosine x, cosine y, and you switch to sine, minus sine x, sine y, okay? On the right side, I'm going to write everything in terms of time and, I mean sine and cosine, the parent function, and then I'll simplify it as much as I can, okay? So you remember that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, and you also recall that secant is a reciprocal trig function, which is one over cosine theta, okay? I'm going to make this, use these two identities to, to express this in terms of sine and cosine, all right? So we're going to have 1 minus tan becomes sine x over cosine x. Tan y becomes times sine y over cosine y. And then in the denominator, we'll have uh, secant becomes 1 over cosine x. And then secant y becomes 1 over cosine y. All right, still focusing on the right side, let's simplify that a little bit more. 
So I'm going to have um, 1 minus sine x sine y over cosine x cosine y. I'm just writing it nicely so that uh, we can carry out the, our transformations with, with ease, okay? Uh, so, uh, so, and then on the bottom we have over 1 divided by cosine x cosine y. Okay, so there, there are two ways I can do this. If you notice that these two denominators are the same, I can multiply top and bottom by cosine x cosine y, and that gets rid of the denominator here, and I'll just distribute it to the top, and I'll have cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y, and I'll be done. But that's a little bit abstract, so let me show you the longer way of doing it, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add these two fractions upstairs here. So uh, let's put this over 1. Okay, you see that? Now, um, to combine these two fractions, I need the LCD, right? The LCD of these two is cosine x, cosine y. So what I'll do is I'll multiply the left side, top and bottom, by cosine x, cosine y. On the top here and on the bottom, cosine x, cosine y. So that I have the same LCD, okay, the same denominator. Okay, so that becomes uh, cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y. Uh, still in the numerator, we have the same common denominator, so we can write them as a as one fraction over cosine x cosine y. And then the denominator still stays uh, as it was before, which is um, 1 over cosine x, uh, cosine, 1 over cosine x cosine y, okay, cosine x cosine y. Now, let's see. So what I can do next, I can multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of this, uh, which is the same thing, or I can just multiply the numerator and the denominator by this denominator right here, okay? So you notice that these two denominators are exactly the same. So a trick to get rid of them uh, simultaneously is to multiply the numerator by cosine x, cosine y, and the denominator by cosine x, cosine y. Okay? You can put it over 1 if, if that makes you happy. So what I'm doing here is basically my aim is to eliminate these two at once since they're the same. Okay? I'm not changing the problem since I'm multiplying by the same the same expression. So, see what happens here? This divides out to 1, and this divides out to 1, okay? And then you're going to end up with uh, cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y, and guess what? That is exactly what's equal to what we have on the right, on the left side, which was uh, cosine x cosine y minus sine x, sine y, okay? So that completes our first example. All right, let's go ahead and consider question number two. All right, so for number two, we have uh, to prove, prove that um, secant x minus y is equal to secant x secant y divided by 1 plus tan x tan y. Okay? Alright, so first of all, I want to express everything using sine and cosine, and then we're going to simplify the more complicated side to the simpler side, okay? So I have a secant here. I'm going to use the reciprocal identity for secant. I know secant is 1 over cosine, so I'm going to rewrite this as 1 divided by cosine x minus y Okay, uh, that's, that goes on the left side. All right, so 1 divided by cosine x minus y equals, now secant, I'm going to write as 1 over cosine x times the secant, I write as 1 over cosine y. And then that whole thing divided by 1 plus tan x, I'll write as sine x over cosine x. Okay, we talked about this earlier in example one. And then tan y is sine y over cosine y. All right. Now I'm going to apply the um, difference identity for cosine over here on the left side. So that's going to give us 1 over 
uh, cosine x, cosine y. Remember, for cosine, the function stay the same, but the sign switches. Plus sine x, sine y. All right. And then on the right side, uh, let's write it nicely before we start combining. We have 1 over cosine x, cosine y in the numerator. And then in the denominator, uh, it's over um, 1 plus sine x, sine y over cosine x, cosine y. All right, so let me add the two fractions in the denominator. I'm going to write this over 1. LCD of 1 and cosine x, cosine y is cosine x, cosine y. So I multiply this by cosine x, cosine y on the top and bottom so that I get the same denominator, okay? So let's leave the left side alone. I want to focus my attention on the right side because it looks complicated, and I, if I simplify, I might end up with this, okay? So I have 1 over on the top, cosine x, cosine y, divided by, in the denominator, I'll have um, cosine x, cosine y. Let me write that again. Uh, so on the bottom we have uh, cosine x, cosine y. Plus sine x, sine y. All right. They have the same common denominator, so we can write them as one united fraction over um, cosine x, cosine y. Okay. Now you notice that the denominator on the numerator and the denominator on the denominator of the two fractions are the same. So we can use the same trick I showed you in example one. I can multiply the top by cosine x, cosine y, and the bottom by exactly the same thing, cosine x, cosine y. That helps me eliminate the two denominators in one step. If this process is too complicated for you or you don't understand it, you can always multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator and you end up with exactly the same answer. Okay? All right, so if you notice, um, on the top, these divide out to 1. And on the bottom, these divide out to 1. And you end up with 1 in the numerator equals uh, the whole expression in the denominator, which is uh, cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. Okay? Let's see if that matches what we had up there. Oh, wow. Perfect match. So that equals what we had on the left side before. So let's bring that down to show uh, equality. So the left hand side and the right hand side are the same. So we have equals cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. And there you have it. That completes the proof. Okay? All right. So thanks uh, so much for taking the time to watch this clip. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. You can just click here to subscribe. Uh, you can like this video by clicking down here if you did. And uh, please, please, please post a comment to tell me what you think about this video. Uh, more videos can be found on myglobserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.